Hi everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and set up uh, your home's new fourth access uh, with the uh, 6550 laser machine. You should have received the fourth access, the um, the end pin, and then two wrenches to tighten up. I just have a piece of wood in here for right now. As you can see, I've had this in here. Then I lasered uh, that on there, and I'll show you how to set up in Lightburn. It's actually really easy. Um, unlike the uh, the mandrill, the 60 or the 3018, it's, it's this is much easier. Um, the uh, light burn takes some of the guesswork out of it for you. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is connect up your fourth axis. Now, on the uh, CNC machine, the mandrill, as you, my other uh, video, and for the 3018, I would have had I had them on the X axis, but for the 6550, I'm going to have it on the Y axis. I have more room this way. And uh, the x-axis has more travel, so I'll put it on the I'll put the uh, fourth axis on the y. Plus, the um, light burn mainly works for the y, and it does not have a setting for the x that I'm aware of. So, anyway, so your control board, and uh, pull this picture up for you real quick. So basically, all you're going to do is you're going to take the y-axis plug out, the power plug, and you're going to put in the one for the fourth axis and it is this one right here as you can see here to the right over here is the uh, the X and then this is the Y in the center here so you just pop it out and you just pop in the fourth axis and that's it and then go ahead and turn it on and then uh, what we're going to do is come over to our software here and I'm going to just kind of walk you through first, making sure everything's working. This is kind of how what, what I'll start with. So the first thing we want to do is, um, if you have it all connected, which it should be, make sure it's plugged up, run in, COM port, and up here where laser says ready. So right click on the word devices, and it, it, it uh, refreshes from disconnected to ready, and then rests it up here. So then go to move. And just change it to like one inch and let's just move the laser and make sure that it's actually working so this is the Y up and down as you can see the fourth axis is turning and then let's go left right make sure we're all good and everything's supposed to be and we're working so now we know we have connection and everything's good so um, it's actually pretty easy. What we're going to do is, like I did on the other one, you're going to grab a piece of tape and you're going to want to put a piece of tape on here. Let me, zoom, let me zoom you in a little bit. It's kind of a little more important part here. And, you know, the other thing is, is just because you have it this way doesn't mean you have to configure it that way. So I'm actually going to turn it for you like this so you can see the line rather than, you know, looking at it sideways. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one piece of tape here and then we're going to put one here and you're going to mark a line on them. I already have a line on mine because I've done this already, but pretty much you're going to put a line here and here so that's exactly where it needs to be. And then, you know, you could turn it, whatever, but um, again, our purpose of this is to, when we hit test, which I'll show you, this needs to make one complete rotation, just one rotation. We don't have to edit any of the settings on the board or anything like that. I'm going to back up just a little bit here. Right there should be good. Um, we don't have to edit any of the Gerbil settings, uh, the dollar sign 101 or 100, because there's a rotary setup right in Lightburn. So let's go ahead and now that we have that connected, we can actually see the lines are in line. Um, if you go up to Laser Tools and then go to Rotary Setup, so in this instance, let's leave it on Chuck. Let me move this, uh, let me move this over, sorry. Let's leave it on Chuck, and then we're gonna leave it on Y axis. We're gonna enable the rotary. And here we have 40 millimeters per rotation. So I'm not really sure what that's gonna get me on this. So I would say if you have like a high number, then just lower it down. Let's just put it at 50. Whatever you have, doesn't matter, just put it at 50 millimeters per rotation. And don't worry about the object or circumference yet, just the millimeter per rotation. And then click test and watch your rotary. As you can see, it didn't even come close to doing a complete turn. Also, this is gonna move a little bit, so make sure that your uh, 
your x-axis is out of the way. Um, so that did not move. I'm going to click it again. It didn't even go halfway around, so it didn't even go halfway. So I'm going to jump it up to 80 and then hit tab and then hit test again. It's better, but not enough. All right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 100. Now, the reason why I'm only going little increments is I'm just trying to show you that you probably shouldn't jump, you know, 30, 50, 100 at a time because you're going to go way out of whack quick. Just work, take your time, work your way up. So I'm at 100 now, click test. That's better. So basically what we're doing is we're just gonna keep doing this in increments until it does one complete turn. And honestly, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna go 108 maybe. Let's try it. Mm, so close, how about 115? All right, and keep an eye when that line lines up. So close. So just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go 117. And hit test. Almost there. I'm gonna do one more test with this one just to be so I can see exactly how much it's off here. Just a little bit. So I'm going to go 119. Hit tab and I'm going to hit test again. Now 119 looks dead on. Um, it actually looks like it might be 120. 120. And if, and if it's if you're if you're being very very precise, you could go 119 and a half. You know anything 119 three quarters. Now that looks pretty darn good. Um, I actually think it's a little bit much. I'll do a test again. Hmm. It is so close. I'm going to go 119.75. Now that looks dead on. Okay, so to me that looks dead on. So we got 119.75. Now, when you click roller, the it does say here that the uh, the object diameter and that um, doesn't really matter. It's just good for a calculator. But um, I'm not really sure if it applies to this or not. I thought it had to do with um, you know offsetting the image for you, but. Um, I always put it in anyway, just because I like to and like to know the, the difference. So for this, I'm going to show you what I would do here. Let me back you out. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to take this tape off. Turn it sideways. And I'm going to measure my... Diameter is 28.48.45. Not what it was before. 28.45 millimeters. So this goes in inches. So 28.45 in inches is 1.12. So I'm going to change my diameter to 1.12, and hit tab, and you can see it changes the circumference here for me. So that's the circumference of the. Um, my piece of material there. So I'm going to click OK and let's, let's burn something on it. Why not? Real quick. Let's just put, um, let's see. Let's do Euro Home. Let me move this out of the way. I'm going to lower this down a little bit. Wish there was a place where we could always put this, you know? Uh, let's see here. Euro Home. We're going to put it on layer one. That's fine. Fill. Let's see, I'm just going to say speed, um, 65 power, 65 is fine, doesn't matter. Um, actually, you know what, I'm going to click uh, reset the default and then I'm going to come back and do it again because I had some previous settings in there. 65, 65 is fine, fill, that, 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 click OK, OK, 
so that is there we're going to say start a current position from the center I'll put it right there and I'm going to move my laser down just over it and I'm going to keep my laser up high because um, I'm not real positive where it's going to take off to or not take off to but it should just do a, a circle around it and that's going pretty fast so I'm going to go to my move and slow it down a little bit faster than what I wanted it to go so now I'm going to go frame again okay that's way too big so I got a five inches wide piece here that I'm doing so that's just way too big for me so let me just bring this down here I'm going to change it to 1.55 that's fine all right uh, let's see I'm going to make sure it's locked I'm going to change this to 1.55 hit tab zoom in and now hypothetically if right there can you see that yes you can Let me make sure you can see it if if that was there I'm gonna lift it up and one thing I would recommend would be actually I just pulled it back up a little bit because if it's not right where you want it and it runs over and hits one of these pieces here it you know could potentially get in the way so just keep in mind especially if you have the air assist you don't want to hit these um, you could turn them around and put them inward but it depends on what material you have. So I'm just gonna move it over here for right now because I'm gonna try and burn it right here. So I'm gonna move it out of the way a little bit and then click frame. That's actually pretty good. I'm actually gonna move it inward a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm perfectly lined up in the center and I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down now. And then use your, uh, use your little cylinder here to put it right there. Just so you know you got the right height there. And then I'm going to come back to where I would want it. So now I'm going to just hit frame again first. Oh, I'm way off. Try that again. A little more. And now I'm going to hold the shift key when I hit frame. Let me move this out of the way here. Actually, let me do this. Let me put this here. Let me move this up here. And now I'm going to hold the shift key when I hit frame. And you should see it light up. So I know exactly where it's going to go. And now that I did that, I can actually see that I have to come forward a little bit here. So I'm going to do that. And what I have is I have it on current position. And starting from the center, so basically, here I'll use my thing here. It, the current position center is going to start, so this is actually going to be the center of the text. So it's going to come out to the left, and come out to the right. If I have 1.5 inches or 1.15, you know, then it's going to, or 1.55, then it's going to break that up half here, half there. So let me do it one more time. I like to do lots of testing before I do it. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the shift key down and um, holding the shift key down and then clicking frame. One other thing I want to mention to you is you see right here the enable rotary. You want to make sure that's enabled. So if you go up to laser tools, rotary setup, you want to make sure enable rotary is on. And um, how you get this to show up here is you go up to edit and let me move, let me, let me move the camera out of the way for one quick second here. Whoops. Wrong one again. Um, edit. Is it settings? No. Um, go up to edit. Device settings. And right here is a fire button. No, I was. that wasn't where it was. Darn it. My bad. Edit. Settings. Um, somewhere it should say enable rotary. Show rotary enable on main window right here. So you want to turn this on and off. So make sure that's on and click OK. And then it'll show up here because you don't want to accidentally leave it on or it might mess up your next burn. So, But you want to make sure it's on for this though. So Anyway, I'm going to do one more frame to make sure I'm where I want to be and then we'll just burn it real quick.
looks good. It's not very big text, um, but anyway. So what do I got? 65, 65. Let's see that, that, that. Make sure everything's good. We're gonna go. All right. Let me turn the camera back on. Whoops. And I'm actually gonna bring it up bigger for you. And then we're gonna click go. So, if you'll notice, <laughs> I forgot to mirror my image. So, you have to click on, whoops, let me, let me, let me lower this down here. Oh, you can't even see it here. Hold on. So, you can see now, I have to mirror the image. I forgot about mirroring the image. So it's upside down. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on your image and go to arrange and then flip horizontally. Um, so that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and burn it again real quick and we'll go from there. Move us out of the way, and that looks beautiful. See that? Oh, yeah, really nice. It's not warped or anything, and it's actually straight now that I've mirrored the image. Um, I totally forgot. Almost everything you do on the rotary is you have to mirror your image, and, and anyway, that's uh, so you can have this either way, but that's what you do, it's how you get it to run, that's how you uh, set it up. As you can see, it's very simple. In one of my other videos, I'm going to have, you know, setting this thing all up and the different things you can do with it. It's actually pretty cool. I have these this way, so they grip the uh, the dowel rod, but you can actually turn them around and you can see the different levels here. And you could put like um, cups, whatever, you could put a tumbler in it, or you could leave it like this and actually open them up to stretch outward to touch the inside of the cup. But you don't want to scratch, <clears throat> excuse me, scratch it either. And Primarily, I would think it would be for more of wood items, but yeah, you use it for whatever you want to use it for. But that's pretty much it. Um, it's pretty simple, nice. If you have a longer piece, you can put the pin on there. Again, brace it down. But uh, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, um, on your um, on your uh, on your light burn, if you go up to laser and rotary setup, I would note your setup 119.75 oh my gosh this camera um i would note your settings 119.75 and when you're not using your rotary make sure you turn this off because uh what this does is is light burn is smart it knows that it's going to be on a circumference and it actually stretches that for you so if you uh if you want to see the difference turn the rotary off and then burn it again and you'll see it'll actually be more scrunched up on your uh, on your material so Anyway, um, hope that gets you started. If you have any questions, let us know. Have a good day. Jungle.